Hello, my beautiful creative friends. How are you today? I'm just so happy to be here again. I know it was a very big creative weekend. I really try to like, because of the new stencils that were coming out, which I don't know if you saw the live stream on Friday night, maybe you saw the replay or you were there live. And these are some of the monoprints that we did. So we had so much fun creating with my new, well, I had so much fun creating with my new stencils and some of the girls like also were like happy to see how to monoprint. It was, um, it was a little bit of, uh, um, I think eye opening for some people that have never done mono printing and they were just like so excited. I know one one gal like uh, she went and played for four hours after the show, so that was amazing. I'm just so impressed with that. And uh, yeah, so I just like just so excited about this. I'm just leafing through them. Oh, hello, hi Lisa, Stacy, Chrissy. You failed on mono printing. Can be, can be. You didn't fail. There's no failing in mono printing. You can't fail. Get like it's just you're just trying out techniques. So as you can see, we're gonna I'm gonna be creating this because I want to show you how to basically use the mono prints inside your art journaling, canvas, whatever you want. Okay. And I tried to make the same mono print similar to what I had done here, so I could use the exact same one. And I am going to turn the page. I'm gonna do this in a Bit later on because I end up with a lot of doubles and I like working this is a eight and a half by eight and a half journal I just recently got it so it's almost brand new my first page was that one Here's the empty. yeah there it is there's the middle and I like it because it opens flat which is what I want it's from speedball I linked it in the description along with my new stencils and everything else that I'm using today and yeah so let's get started so what I usually like doing with my monoprints is collaging them into my into my artwork. And what I did is besides this one that I'm going to actually cut, I am going to kind of pick another background. And that just kind of starts, gives them start is the one point where it gives like the mood of what's going to happen in the card journal. So it kind of gives it like this. I don't know how to explain it. It sets the mood. That's what I'm trying to do. It sets the mood for the art journaling. And there's so many that I really like, but I am trying to match them with this. So do I want a contrasting color or do I want to just um, a, have them, you know, like the same color? So there's so much to choose from. I made so many designs. So I'm kind of, I love this one, but I think that's going to keep it for another. And I love this one as well which would look really good. But I know how that most of it will be covered because it just kind of gives a background. So I was thinking, maybe I will go with a contrasting one like this one. Let's try it. Okay, it's either that or the other option is to go with this, which is also pretty contrasting, or this one. Let's see. Okay, so I have two to think about. Thank you so much, Barbara, hi. Um, so if you want to watch that video where I did these monoprints, it's listed in the, actually at the end of this video, you can go watch that. And it's also in my channel. You can see how I did these monoprints with the stencils. So do I use this one or this one? Maybe I'll go with the contrasting one, okay? So what I like doing is I basically, this is rice paper, so you can easily rip it. And it just really looks nice to just put pieces of it. And you can um, definitely like, you know, cut them in, in all different directions. You can cut them smaller than this. Like for example, I don't want so much of this white. So I just going to maybe put it like this. Oh, I like that. So even though no, no two pages are ever going to become, um, going to be the same okay it's not two art journal pages can ever be the same even though i am using the exact same techniques in the exact same way i never had two pages look exactly the same there's always going to be some differences and that's what i love about it you can't recreate art you can take the you can take the, the techniques 
and um, and do something with them, but you cannot recreate the same exact thing because even the monoprints sometimes are different. So I want to say hi to everyone. I just feel like uh, the Lotus is not in stock. Is it sold out already? Oh, wow. I didn't even know. So yeah, they sell out quickly. So, <laughs> but they look at beautiful, like the, the lily is really, really nice. So if you want, look at how the lily turned out. Yeah, the Lotus is one of the favorite ones. There's one very similar called Petals, uh, Gigi. I think it's Gigi that said. GGTX, oh, I don't know, GGTX, I don't know. And um, that one is, gives really beautiful results too. I'll show you which one it is, hold on. Sorry, I'm kind of like all over the place, but I'm trying to. This one, which is from my older collection, these petals, it's stunning as well. Um, so look it up. I mean, this one almost is, I think it sold out. And I'm not, I can't actually even remember which one sold out. So that's good to know. Oh, and the lily, the lily is beautiful. I have to say that some of the best prints I got were from the lily, this one. And truthfully, the Moroccan tiles, I am like in love. Like what I did with this, you know, sometimes you don't even know what you're going to get with the things. But one of my favorite prints, which I'm going to use on another video, is this one. I'll show you. Where did it go? The one I showed you before. Um, no, actually, I do love. I love this one as well, <laughs> which is not the Moroccan tiles. But um, this is the lily. Just saying. Like, look how pretty that is. So, oh, this one, the Moroccan tiles. It literally looks like like I like I went to Marrakesh or somewhere in Morocco. Like seriously. So, okay, going back, I'm like getting um getting ahead of myself. Uh, so, what I like doing is kind of creating like a frame around because I'm gonna have the flower, the lotus flower in the middle. I am going to kind of create a frame around and kind of leave a little bit of white space because that's important for a composition. And that's one of the things I really like um, focusing on, okay? So I'm gonna take some gel medium and where did it go? So somehow I did not prepare my gel. Oh. I'm opening a new bottle of um, gel medium. I literally just finished the other one. And hold on. Okay, hold on a second. All right, so this gel medium is my favorite, the matte medium, because it's matte. I mean, I do use gloss as well, but not too much. And it's just easy to use. Okay, let's see, oops. Okay, and I love applying it with a brush. And I have a special brush that is just for applying this gel medium because it gel in general, because it's like a glue, it kind of ruins my, my brushes. So I actually keep it in water just so it will not, um, it will not harden, okay? So that's a trick, I don't know. I mean, I know other people don't do that, but I tend to, to keep it in water. So the gel medium, uh, sorry, the, so the brush will stay uh, in intact, okay? Like not, like not, um, nothing will happen to it. So I am gluing this to the background. I need a little bit more glue. And then, is, as, as I always say, it's really important to always seal your papers, okay? Because when I'm adding anything on top, whether it is um, any type of mixed media products or wet products, such as modeling paste or um, what's the other thing I'm trying to, oh yeah, like wet paints or acrylic paints or whichever you're adding, okay, uh, you are going to want to protect your papers because they're thin. Even though they are, I mean, most, most papers are pretty durable, you don't want them to start ripping on you. That's not a fun thing to happen, okay? So that's a good tip to always know. I know I always say it, but always there's always somebody that that is new, and I want to always repeat myself and reminder. Sometimes it's just a reminder for people. Some people already know this, but I just want to make sure. This is how I teach my classes. I always go from zero, even though people might already know this, but it is important to, um, to always kind of do the same steps. 
because it's important for uh, learning. So, oh, hello, Puerto Rico. Hola. Um, so, okay, yeah, so that was my point. <laughs> so I just keep a drip. I love because it drips. You can also use like a little palette on this side. I actually have one here where I'm gonna use my, my I prepared it just in case, in case I wanna put some mediums on it. So, okay, let's see. Okay, so I think I want it like this. So I love collaging my prints, and especially when it's done with, with the rice papers, they're thinner, it's really cool. I didn't even realize that um, how cool it is to work with rice papers or monoprint on rice papers is way nicer than even paper. I Joggles now has uh, their own rice papers, or you can just get it in, you know, from another brand. I linked, I think, both of both kinds down, downstairs. I meant to say <laughs> down in the description, okay? Uh, not downstairs. You're not coming to my house. It's not where I mean. Okay. Thank you so much, Melvin. Okay, so I'm going to kind of frame the rest. And it looks weird right now. And this is what um, my mom used to have a saying in another language where she said, don't show uh, half work. Um, who do you show? Like she would ask me because whenever like she was, I was, she was doing something I would say, well, uh, you know, like, oh, is that done? And she would say, well, you can't show half done work to anyone because only the only person who can see it is the person, the only person who really knows the, the, the vision of it is the person making it. So right now this might look like, oh, just a bunch of random things, but it has a purpose because what it does is just gives the, the, the like I said, the mood, the setting of what, how things are going to look, okay? So even though it looks random, it has a purpose. Oh, hi, Sandra. So guys, so nice to see you here. Welcome. Did I, if I didn't say hi to one of you, please don't be upset. I sometimes I'm trying to watch, um, watch and do everything at the same time. Hi, Rayanne. Okay, so if, and I'm trying to answer questions there. I also have Susan in the, in the, um, my friend Susan, who is helping me today. She was so kind to come and, and do the, um, and do some modding so she will let me know if I miss anything from anyone, okay? So yeah. And if you, as I said, if you haven't watched the, where I made these mono prints, you can definitely watch it still on my channel. That's why it's there. <laughs> That's why my channel's there. Okay, let me just. Yeah, Lily is there. She was saying that Lotus is sold out. Is Lotus sold out? I don't know. Somebody check if Lotus is sold out. Susan maybe can check then. Susan, can you check if Lotus? Somebody is saying Lily's there, but Lotus is sold out. But Petals is there, which is from the older collection. Ugh, I don't like this weight here. Hold on, let me rip that. Okay, so I think I kind of have it framed a little bit. Okay, let's see. I think I put it too far away from the... Okay. Okay, so I think I'm kind of gonna leave it like this. Well, I have two more papers. I might as well not waste it because then it just goes, I'm not gonna keep these little, little pieces, tiny little pieces. So as you can see, I kind of did a frame around. I have this, but it's okay. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to dry. Oh, there you go, Gigi. Lotus stencil is still available. So maybe you were looking at a different one, but you can get it.
they do sell out. So, I mean, it's, it's if you do want to get some of them, I do recommend you getting them before they do sell out. I mean, Barbara always gets new, but then you have to wait until the next time. Okay, this dries really quickly, which is amazing. And now what I want to do is I'm going to add a little bit of gesso kind of in the middle. And what, what it does, it just kind of blends everything in, in the middle inside. Okay, sorry, I was getting a paintbrush. Okay, so... So what I do with the white gesso is that I use it to kind of blend in the edges. So first I just go in the middle. I just want to add the gesso so when I add the paint, it stays, not paint, sorry. I'm going to add a little bit of, of, of yeah, acrylic paint, but the flowing, the liquid acrylic paint, okay? Okay, so there we go, just there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little sponge. You can also do this with a small paintbrush. So a little sponge like this. And this is why I wanted this here because I don't want so much on it. You can kind of hide the edges. So if you don't want, if let's say, one of the edges went too far out, or you don't like the way it looks, or you want to blend it in, you can do that. You can also use a paintbrush. Let me show you. Sorry, my, my chair really creaks. I didn't even realize how much it creaks until. So you can go like this. So there's two options. And I like either one is good. And it also gives like texture. So you're kind of blending everything in. I think I'm gonna keep, stay with the paintbrush. I like the, the coverage better. So for example, that corner was sticking out too much. So therefore I'm going to blend it. So I'm looking at the poll and I see a lot of you use your monoprints for collage, mixed media, art journaling, which is great. That's exactly what I love doing it. But I've used many of them to make cards as well. Like just it's such a, you can cut a piece and create a card and it's such an easy background. So that's beautiful to do. Oh, there goes my dog. Sorry, that always happens. I don't know if you guys can hear him. And, um, and then there is people that just like have it sitting in a pile. That's what I ask. And you know, and I want you to, what this is geared for, like these type of videos, is to help you, you know, kind of learn what to do with them because this mono printing is so much fun. But then you just end up with stacks of papers that you don't know what to do with. And that's what's important to just kind of um, learn what to do with them right it's it's it helps it helps with everything now what i want to do is i want to put a little bit of the white i mean the just the white gesso here and you can do this also with um clear gesso if you want okay but i'm going to do it with white gesso and just kind of wet it i want to create like a it's called a white wash and what it does is kind of makes it the gesso really, really watery. So I'm going to mix this. Okay. I think I even have too much. I'm going to put some back. I um, want it really watery. And I'll show you why in a second. I know it's a little bit, let me just move it a bit closer so you guys can see where, what I'm using. Okay. So I'm going to show you why in a minute. So having a watered down gesso helps for creating that lighter tone on your collage, okay? So you want to kind of create this white wash. It's called a white wash effect. And if you add too much, 
you can always um, do this and take it away. So this is the way I teach like in my Patreon classes. I try to go very in detail and about things. It's very hard to do in detail um, classes when I have only like, you know, I'm doing videos for only eight minutes on YouTube. Those are more like to show that there is the techniques. But if you want to learn more in depth about how to do certain techniques and have like the in real time, whether it's live or if I do it in a video, because sometimes I'll just do a video, then you can just join the Patreon and the way it works is that I have one or two videos a month, depending on the price. The one video is usually, a, it's a $10 amount. And for two videos, it's 25 But the second video it's, is actually a very involved video. It takes usually two hours to teach. It's, it's more in-depth. I explain a lot more. And it's something that is worth... Um, is worth if you want to learn like really in depth about everything, okay? So now, this might seem again, still seems like it looks like it's not, it's not cohesive, but it will get there, okay? And now I'm going to dry. So the way we work with mixed media is we work with layers, right? So when you're working with layers, you kind of get it kind of looks weird, like I said, like it looks like it's not related. But then, but then when you put everything together and everything looks so cohesive, that's when magic happens. But at the beginning, it kind of looks odd, you know, it kind of looks like, well, what, what is she doing there, you know? And if you want to add more and you want to cover more, you have to probably dry sometimes the first layer. And this is what I'm doing right now. I want to cover some of these corners. So I am going back and doing that again. Okay. It's all good, Meche. You're here. You can watch the beginning after. I'm just calling. Okay, that's good. All right. I just want to make sure it's really dry before I do the next step, which is going to be stenciling. I think, okay, so for the other one, I used the Moroccan tiles, which is this one. It looked beautiful. I'm going to show you how it looked then there, okay? Just so you know the difference. You can see the, the design of the Moroccan tiles here. As you can see, I added more of a purplish. You see that you can tell the design of the paper, but it covered too much. So what I'm going to do for this one is I'm actually going to use um, a different design that basically has less coverage. And yes, Susan, that's funny that my, my, both my, I have two of these and, and they've got, these are, this is very, very old. It's really, it looks really gross. I understand that. <laughs> okay. So now I'm going to use this one because I, it, it will cover less of the beautiful design behind. And the way I work with this is using modeling paste. Any modeling paste or texture paste from Tim Holtz, any of the modeling paste that give you that 3D effect will work. And it doesn't really matter which one you use. Okay. And what I'm going to do, yes, well loved. That's a good way of saying that my, what, how my, um, how it looks, <laughs> my, my dryer looks like. Okay, so as you can see, you can leave paint on stencils or you can use, I could use the other side too, but it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna use the same. Eh, maybe I'll use the other side so you can actually see what's going on. Um, so you can leave paint on stencils, but anything like paste is very good to clean up. So after this, I'm gonna be cleaning it, of course. And um, 
the way I'm going to add this is I'm not going to be adding it everywhere, okay? So I will only add it in certain areas. So usually around the edges where I already put the design and I'm gonna go in a little bit, okay? So you get a little bit on the, um, a little bit on the actual design and a little bit going in into the white space, okay? But not covering the full white space. I mean, you could, there's no rule that you don't have to cover the white space. I just prefer that to leave a little bit of that white space. So that's what I am going to do. Okay. So. And one of the reasons I don't do too many of these lives and things is because they do take a long time to, to teach. And I find that most people don't have the time to come and watch or to re-watch this because, you know, you have limited amount of time in your life for everything. So a lot of people prefer the shorter videos. And those that prefer the longer ones um, have usually joined my Patreon. So that way... They can, you know, watch it step by step a little bit. So it's hard to, I used to do so many of these like live, sh live shows, but uh, oh, look how beautiful that is. Um, so I used to do a lot of these live shows, especially when the pandemic started. And, um, but now like, I just don't have time. I can't do so much. Hey, Tiffany. So nice to see you. Um, so, yeah, there was a group of us that was doing so many shows, but now we're we're really trying to work as creators and you know, and kind of like continue our journey. And sometimes we just run out of time. So this weekend is a long weekend in Canada. It's our Thanksgiving weekend, so that's why. I knew that I had like an extra day to rest because, um, you know, tomorrow is a holiday for us. So it really helped because I was able to kind of, um, you know, have that extra day because talking a lot or even creating or, you know, it, it tires me just a little bit. Just a tiny little bit, although I mean, I am actually pretty energetic today, but I did two of them this weekend. So that's why. So I figured it would be a good time because it's a long weekend to do this. If that makes sense. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I'm using modeling paste, as I said, I'm using this silicone brush and you can use a credit card or an old plastic card for this. Yeah, anything goes. And I love the 3D effect that it creates. And you want to add very thin amount. I actually have a little short video on my YouTube channel of how to use modeling paste, like super, like, so you don't like, you know, mess it up. So if you want to watch that, it, there's a short, it's like a short video, like it's like less than a minute. And it, it gives you some tips about that. Okay, let's clean up my stencil. And this is so important to do. Always clean up your stencils when you're using things like modeling paste, 3D paste, and so forth. So while my paste is drying, I can do this. I sometimes just spray a little bit of water on it. Why? Oh, Barbara's asking why I cover the whole frame. So you don't really have to cover the whole frame, but for me, what I what I wanted with the collage papers is to have just a hint of them in the background. I mean, you could definitely just add a little bit of texture in some places, but it depending on the technique that I'm doing. Sometimes, yes, I just leave it like showing uh, because the design is so beautiful. But the nice thing about the modeling piece is that um, it dries. It dries, um, how do you call this? It dries kind of translucent. So you will still see most of the design underneath. So yeah, I mean, maybe I went a bit overboard on, on, on actually covering it. I wish I, I always forget to like leave it. Um, so 
I always forget to leave some space. That's as I said, I'm, I'm not the greatest at leaving uh, white space and or blank space. But now that I'm going to dry it, you're going to see that it will look a little bit different. And yeah, using your finger for blending is a great way as well. So you can, what I want to see is like, you can see some of the texture designs underneath. Wait till it dries so you can really see it better. Okay. And truthfully, if you, let's say you do this and you want to, you know, you, let's say you don't want some of it. You can actually, while it's still wet, you can actually remove some of it. So you know what, Barb, just for you, I'm going to remove some of it. Because you know what, you're right. Like the beautiful design is not being shown. So you can actually remove some and then you will see the design. So it works out well. So if you went overboard like I did, <laughs> and you don't want that to show as much, you know, the pattern, go ahead and remove some. You can remove some of it just to show you. Everything can be fixed. Everything can be done, redone, you know. So there it is. Actually, you're right. Barb, you're right. I'm going to remove some of this where there's really nice patterns, okay? So if I see there's a really nice pattern here, I'll just, you can just use a baby wipe. I like that. Okay, that's good. So yeah, I mean, sometimes when you're using a stencil, you don't know where things are going to end up because you can't, you're basically covering the whole area, right? So it's nice to do that, to just kind of play around and sort of see where the stencil will lead you. Okay, there we go. You see, I can actually, now you can see the patterns. So I'm still going to dry because there's like more that I'm going to be adding, okay? And I'm gonna show you what I mean in a second. But drying, especially something like modeling paste is so, so important, truly important. And I literally use my, my hands to check if it's wet and it's still wet. This is the only part that I am more impatient about because I need to wait until this happens and changes and, and it dries. Otherwise, I'm good. In the meantime, I'm going to pick my colors. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go with the contrasting colors like the violet. Um, oh, somebody's saying sometimes I over dry and it bubbles. So Meche, if you're over, if you're doing that, if it's, you're getting bubbles, it's because you're holding it in the same spot for too long. You need to move your dryer back and forth like I'm doing here. Like you see me always moving Be and don't get too close because if you get too close, especially with a really hot dryer, it will bubble up. So the way to avoid that, unless you want that specific texture, which I've done in the past, you want to make sure that you're moving back and forth, and that avoids the bubbling. And I think I'm dry. Yay. Okay. So I'm going to, this I'm going to clean because I want to put the paints here. So she says you use modeling paste golden for the first time in a few years and after drying. Okay, so there's a couple of things about that. Stacey, did you put gesso underneath? Sometimes that makes a difference. It also depends on what your surface was below. If it's like something like paper, it would be okay. Um, you, is, was that an old modeling paste because I've had my modeling paste for a few years and it's been okay. So I'm not sure. Yeah. So that's odd. I don't know because that has never, that has happened to me only with crackle paste where the modeling paste 
become like take like you know like how do you call this like peels off but it shouldn't happen it really shouldn't happen i use the finnabar modeling paste and it's great but it golden is just as comparable i wouldn't say that it's not okay so i'm using this is called queen acridon oh, i can't say these words violet mm -hmm. there we go and i'm going to be using the phthalo turquoise too so kind of mixing the two together but I'm really going to water them down. If the modeling paste was old, like, then that does make a difference. Like, I mean, anything that is that type of material could change consistency. Okay, I'm going to get a paintbrush. Where are my paintbrushes? My good paintbrush. Okay, there. There we go. Okay, so for the paint, for this, I am going to start. I don't mind if they're mixing, but I do want to start with adding them in the in the edges, at the edges, I meant to say. So if there was gel, oh, actually, another thing. If there was gel medium underneath it, uh, that could resist it. So, yeah, that could make it peel, okay? So make sure you, if you're using gel medium like I did here, you notice that I put gesso on top. I always put gesso on top of gel medium because it is such a, um, it's it's such a smooth surface that you get. So anything kind of resists off it. And when I want to use paint or modeling paste or anything like that, I tend to use gesso to do that to kind of get rid of the, the smoothness of it. So if you did use gel medium, and I don't know, obviously I can't tell you what you used, um, then it is. I'm going to start covering, and I'm gonna to try to not cover too much the design. And, I'm, and I love the combination of these two colors because it actually creates like a dark purple in the middle of it. So kind of like this magenta, it's magenta violet, I don't know. And, um, Oh, there you go. So that is what happened, Stacy. So there you go. Okay, I solved it. Yeah, you always need to put gesso after using gel medium like I did here, okay? So that's a great tip uh, that is really important. When you're adding any wet stuff like color, um, modeling paste, or on top of something that you collaged with gel medium or Mod Podge or any of that, you make sure that you add gesso, whether it's clear gesso or white gesso. Okay, so I mean, this page is going to look very different than the other one that I made, even though I followed the same exact same steps. And that is because I used a different background. Okay, I used a different, um, not only a different stencil, but I actually used a different um, page, right? A different monoprint page. And it doesn't really matter. Like, as you can see, most of it is covered but it kind of creates a really beautiful contrast. And that's what I love about it. And I am going to do another video, hopefully not a live, but an actual video where I'm going to show how to use it uh, with that actually shows the contrasting colors. I have an idea about that and I just want to see where it takes me. But that's something, Stacy. like um, those type of helpful tips, that's basically what I teach in my, for my patrons and my members, because it's something that, you know, people don't, we might not notice, you know, you might not realize somebody doing it in a video might not explain every single step, because as I said, there's not enough time. So most of the step, most of the time, they're very quick. The videos are quick and they're like, you know, just to show you a technique, but it's not going in depth. So you get so much more from um, that. And yeah, like Susan says, the gesso gives it tooth. It just gives it like that extra bit of grip that helps it like, you know, that it helps the paint kind of attach to it or like the modeling paste because gesso is porous and the actual gel medium is not, okay? 
So just to talk about a little bit about this technique and I'm going to show you what I mean. I don't know why it's getting wet here. Um, I am adding it a little bit at a time. Um, hold on. A little bit at a time and then letting it drip. I love this technique. It's one of my favorite techniques and I use it often. Sometimes I do it with watercolors. Sometimes I do it with like acrylic paints like I'm doing here, fluid acrylics. I've done it with the Magicals from Lindy's. So there's just so many options to do. And I just love the effect. And I want to start to doing it also here to kind of frame the background. So what you do is you put a little bit of it with your paintbrush. And then when you let it water down, it actually, sorry, it actually creates these really cool effects, okay? And it goes in between the stencil patterns, which is what I love. And creates that magical look, like that mixed media look. It is uh, something that a little bit you have to get used to the feel of it. But once you do, it's really magical. So I want to add like here. And I want to, yeah. So some places I forgot to water them. Okay. It's really dark. <laughs> because I used a dark background. So it looks really dark per se, but that's okay. But you can still see some of the designs, which is nice. And I am leaving, as I said, I'm leaving this area a little bit. Yeah, I'm leaving the area a little bit on the white side. So water really is like almost like my best friend, okay? Because it really creates the watercolor effect that I love. So I use a lot of water to create this. And the reason why I'm constantly wiping the middle, not only because I want that white space, but I really don't want it to drip in the middle, in this inside the journal because then it stains so many pages, which is okay. Sometimes it's okay because you can cover it. But if you can avoid it, it's easier later. It's just way easier that way. And I actually love some of the splatters that form. I just, what I like about this technique is that you don't know what you're going to get. It's kind of like you're going to, you're playing, but you don't know what you're going to get. There is a lot of water involved, but you see just by even putting the water, you see how the colors change. You get that violet, you get that you get that magenta, you get like so many different colors. Again. So I don't wax them and I'm okay if it bleeds a little bit. It's bleeding a little bit in the middle, but not so much. But the reason why I don't, sometimes I forget, uh, but you can, if you want to avoid it, you can add um, a, tape or like washi tape. The reason why I don't wax it in the other side also, because I feel like the wax might resist after when I'm gonna add other things. So it's super easy to cover up things after. So for example, let's say it bled like a little bit here, you see, you can just cover the whole page with gesso and that will, that will cover everything. You don't need to worry about it. The white gesso will cover things. So you kind of, um, don't have to like worry because gesso is like your best friend. So not only is gesso going to give you that tooth and prime things, but it actually is going to help you cover up mistakes or cover up things in the page where, where you, when it dripped to the other side. So if I made a mistake here, I could really go in with gesso and cover it up. So if there's an area where I don't like, let's say I put a bunch of paint and it doesn't look as nice, um, I can use gesso and restart it, okay? Like start the painting again, especially if it's acrylic paint because it dries permanent. So you can just cover it up with gesso and it doesn't even get do anything. 
Um, so as you can see, I was working from the outside in. I always work from the outside in in my projects. Very rarely I go the opposite way. And um, that helps to, to kind of build color. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry because this is really extremely wet. And once I dry, then I can assess whether or not I need to add more, um, more color in the middle or not. Because sometimes it's really hard to tell. There's so much water and everything is so wet that it looks like odd. Yeah. Let's do this. Sometimes I'm just going to drip X. I have too much extra stuff dripping. So you can just you know, use it to drip. I have too much paint in some places. So this side I'm really happy with. I can see that it's already drying properly. I feel here some stuff it's missing okay it's more of of the of the whitish it's too white so what i go do is i can go back and just add more so now that it's a little bit more dry the second layer will be a little bit more opaque on top of it So as you can see, like, look, we're almost at an hour and I haven't finished the projects. This is why I said, like, I prefer teaching these uh, as classes because not too many people want to sit through like a long time, right? Like most people don't have like all the time in the world to sit through hours of instructions unless they are, you know, sitting time. That way you can like, you know, either do them live with me or basically anytime you're free, you can just rewatch them. And there we go. So I like that. Now it's better. Um, and let me just see. Yeah. I think here it's missing something. It looks odd. Because it doesn't, it didn't drip in. There we go. I dripped it in. Okay. So while this the second layer is drying, I'm going to cut the flower. Because um, that's what I want to put. It's that lotus flower in the middle. And the way I'm cutting it is I'm leaving the little edge um, around it, the purple edge. I think this is my, you can use um, your gel prints as a focal point. So for example, you could like even die cut with them. Um, so um, it's great because you can actually die cut like an actual, let's say you want to do a butterfly or a bird or a circle or whatever you want to die cut, or even if you want to trace something, so you could use just a plain gel print, okay, like even with just a, like a geometric pattern and use it to die cut and use it as a focal point. So that's what I want to show here today. I mean, in this case, I actually cut the lotus flower, but um, I feel that you can easily, you know, die cut from it as well. Sorry, I'm cutting off screen just because it's really hard for me to cut inside in this like underneath the camera i'm trying oh, there it is yeah so i should have i was going to cut this i was going to pre-cut this okay but what happened is that um i really wanted to show you the print so i figured you know maybe i should just keep it i'm almost done anyways i'm not perfect at cutting um i kind of not perfect at a lot of things. So that's the nice thing about it. That's why I love mixed media because there is the imperfection of it. That not everything has to look amazing. Sorry, 
it has to look amazing for yourself, but now it has, doesn't really matter if there is um, um, it doesn't really matter otherwise. So look how nice it now looks with this. So the purplish kind of ma ma matched with this because I had used the same two colors in this. And, oh, that's so cute, Tara. It's just so Tara is saying that she loves, um, she's actually creating some ATCs and it looks like, it feels as she's creating with me. And yeah, actually, that's actually something that we do in the Patreon, funny enough. So Chrissy and Elaine and Terry, they all come to the classes and they actually, I give you the, the, I give everybody the, um, the, it's not only the, sorry, the materials in advance. So it looks like we're always creating together, which is nice. It's a really great way. Okay. So now, oh, I almost want to put it in the middle. How cool would that look? I think, I think I might put it in the middle. So the other one I put on the side because my white space ended up being more to the side. I'll show you. You see the white space ended up being more this way because of the way I put the, um, the stuff behind it. You can see the designs behind it, the lines and texture. But in this case, you see the white space is in the middle and that might depend on what you're doing, right? So definitely, you know, so maybe in this case, I can actually put two rows of this. So we're going to, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm actually going to uh, die cut the, no, no, die cut, sorry. I'm going to actually uh, glue this with gel medium. Okay. So I'm just waiting still for some stuff to dry. So I'm, I'm just cutting the other one, the edges. Uh, yes. Yeah, so these this journal is actually, I think, my new favorite. This brand of journals. It's, I think it's a brand new. It's called, I don't remember the name. It's by Speedball, the ones that does the brayers and everything else. But they're flat journals. And this one is a 300 GSM. So it's like watercolor paper. It's pretty thick, which is great. Okay, I think I'm good like this. All right, so let's see. Oh, yeah, I like that. How cool is that? That looks nice. I'm going to cut the other side. And yeah, I'm going to cut the other side for this one. Where did I start it? Not that it matters, but I think I started in this one. So if you are looking for... So Cindy, there's... A... So Cindy's asking if it's if these are flatter than the Joggles Art Journals. It's just different because the Joggles Art Journals, you can actually remove the pages. So definitely those will be the flattest because you're removing. But in the Joggles Art Journal, you have, you have them like not attached. This is one of the flattest art journals that I have found where the pages are attached. It's the way that the binding is. It's the seams are different. Okay. So they kind of, they're sewn in. So in the Joggles Out journals, which is, of course, some of my favorite, uh, you tend to have, um, you have the pages like come apart. Well, in this one, yeah, it's a square and they have different shapes. So you can have the longer ones, the, the shorter ones. It's really cool. So, um, yeah, and they're, in, well, they're in Amazon for those who are in the U.S., but I mean, I'm sure they're in Amazon in other places too. Um, I found them in the Canadian Amazon as well, I think. So anyways, yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Okay, sorry, I'm almost done with cutting. As I said, I sort of should have cut this in advance. I don't even know if I'm going far enough. Okay. Might be that this one is. Okay, there we go. All right, so this one, this one is bigger, right? Yeah, I think so. This is the same. Am I using the right? Yeah. Let me just see. No, I think it's like this. Okay. Hold on. No, I think I'm right. Okay. It's hard to tell which side, but it doesn't really matter. It's like a lotus. Okay, so now I'm missing one little one over here. I think I'm missing one of the little, which one is it? Now I can't remember. Let's see. Uh, oh, it's this one over here. So I'll just glue it. Since I'm, 
since I'm already journaling, it's okay. I can just glue the last one because I think it's where I cut when I started my first cut. Okay, there it is, perfect. Now before, I just see that some places are still wet. And if something is wet, especially if this is acrylic paint, you don't have to worry about it. The only thing as a really great tip, I recently did this in one of the short videos on my channel, is that whenever you're using these type of mediums, use a little bit of the waxy microglaze, like what you guys were asking about before, to make sure that the pages don't stick to each other. Okay, gel medium. Let's start by gluing this. Getting my handy brush. And just gluing it in the middle. And make sure obviously that you seal as well. And just it just stays so nicely the way that it. And I know that's the crease, so it might. I'm gonna just lift it a little bit to make sure that I don't get any bubbles in the crease. Now I'm going to glue the other. Okay. I think this is a little bit, oh, see the paint is a little bit wet. I'm being impatient and not waiting for this to dry. I think I want it a bit closer, hold on. So you can still lift it up if it's still wet and just get it a little bit closer if that's what you want. Um, gosh. Okay, there we go. Ah, it's moving. This keeps on moving, why is it moving? And let me glue the, the little piece that goes with it. Okay, there we go. And I'm gonna do the other side. Oh, yes, Cindy, those edges, Susan just presses, if you want to watch the video from the other day, from Friday night, it's on my channel. It's the last video on my channel, but there is the link. Okay, I'd have put a bit too much, but that's okay. So there we go. And while I'm at it, because I already have so much gel medium everywhere, I already cut one of a quotes. This is from my Etsy digital downloads, like the quotes. I have a bunch of quotes that like with really meaningful quotes that I feel are, are perfect for our journals. And this one says do it anyways, because truthfully, we're all sometimes scared of doing things, but we should do it anyways, in terms of art, not everything, don't go jumping off a plane, but you know, oh, that looks so cool. Okay, so let me dry this because I want to show you one last thing that I'm going to do. but I needs to be, oh, like the phoenix riding, rising from the ashes. That's weird. <laughs> that's, no, that's weird that you didn't get one. Sorry, I meant to say, I was reading two comments. First I was reading Barbara, like phoenix riding from the ashes. And I agree, it's like, it really looks powerful and wait till I add the gold. And then I was reading the notification where it said, she didn't get a notification and says, that's weird. So it's like, I said the two answers together. That's weird, Noni, that you didn't get it. Um, maybe you next time just press the set reminder and that should be able to like notify you. Okay, let's see if there's anything. So it sounded odd when I said that. Okay. Oh, I really love, it kind of <laughs> reminds, it gives me like uh, the impression of like, I feel like I'm in a spa. This lotus flower one feels, I don't know, it makes me feel like I'm in a spa. 
in a way. So <laughs> I don't know if that is what the feeling that you get, but that's the feeling that I get, which is funny. So almost dry. Some of the pieces are still a little bit wet and I want to make sure they're dry because of the next step. So just want to. I'm just using some wipes. And again, make sure you move things back and forth so it doesn't and interfere. Okay, so for the other one, I want to show you, you can, you can see here that I added a little bit of gold because that really brought it to life and I'm going to show you what to do with that. So just again, give me one more minute. There's a few ways to do this, okay? Well, Facebook sometimes uh, does tricks and doesn't always do what you want. Not Facebook, I mean, don't I say YouTube. Not always do you get um, notifications. Sometimes it forgets. It's really weird that way. Okay, you see here, I think this is a little bit weird the way it looks, but let's see if we can fix it with a little bit of paint. I have still a little bit of paint here, even though I've started deleting it, deleting it. Um, I started um, doing this, but I just thought, oh, this is weird that it's the way it looks here. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna dry it. Maybe there was too much white there. So the way it I do is I use like, I'm you're gonna use first an acrylic marker. Something happened here, but I can fix that as well. And I always like framing my words. Okay. And what I want to do is I also added like, I want to add some gold, right? So I'm going to add like some lines here. It's kind of frames everything. I tend to frame my art journals a lot. Not every person likes doing that. And you can do it in white as well, but I just feel like the gold really adds a lot. And it doesn't have to be straight lines, actually. If it's less straight, it's better, almost like that. Okay, this kind of makes it more organic, okay? Just have to be careful with the modeling paste because, or if something is wet. Okay, let me just go back here. Oops. So, there we go. So, yes, so that's that and then I'm gonna grab a little bit of where is it oh yeah you can either get some I have this iridescent gold it's a it's, a, it's an actual India calligraphy ink okay but you can also use like a gold um, how do you call this this is gold acrylic paint okay actually yeah no it's fine I'll use a little bit of this first to show you how it looks. It looks really pretty, okay? And I'm gonna water it down a little bit. And we're gonna add some splatters because splatters look amazing. Okay, so I love adding splatters to things. it makes a huge difference. But there's more, even though I know I'm like over the hour, which is fine because it's my, doesn't really matter, but the splatters make a difference. And I'm gonna add a few here because maybe that will kind of blend things together. And what I did with the other one is I actually took some actual acrylic paint and I'm gonna mix it here. And I think I took too much, but that's okay. And using the paintbrush that kind of I used for the gesso, because it has it like these bristles, it's more like a dry, dry brush. I'm going to, 
it just adds a little bit of light to this. Okay, so I added a little bit of water to it, just kind of blend it. But oh, thank you so much. Yeah, I would love for you guys if you to join the Patreon. It, I mean, obviously it's not mandatory, but I really feel that if you're learning mixed media, you will gain, especially if it's art journaling, because I'm really focusing about art, on art journaling, you're going to get so much out of it. And you even just one class, uh, one class a month for $10, you know, you're just getting so much, like kind of like this, you know. And you're going to get so much out of it. And I just want to see people happy. Like, that's the only thing. Like, I want to see people not frustrated, not, I want to see people confident. I want to see you guys, you know, kind of like, you know, come out of your shell, break through the creative, break through creative, break through the creative journey, you know, just really come out of everything you know just it's it's just so important for us to create like i really i talk about this a lot like creativity is so important for so many things and um doing that and creating because we love it and creating because it helps us with our own self uh well-being whatever it is that you create for you know just to have fun to relax but i want nobody to feel that they're afraid nobody to feel the fear that you know something is gonna go wrong because if you looked at this journal right at the beginning you would have said oh that looks so weird so ugly but learning the techniques and just building upon these techniques hel helps so so much so like that is i don't want you guys to be stuck anymore i want you to like just emerge your, from your creativity. And I really feel that sometimes, as I've said this before, copying is okay. Go copy this, you know, just do it. Just obviously just say like, you know, I got inspired by so-and-so. I tend to, um, I tend to like get inspired by so many people, you know, and then it just becomes my own. But when I started this, I was copying how people were doing things. I wasn't like saying, oh, I came up with this idea, but I was just, um, I was, I was copying people to learn. And that is like so important, if that makes sense. Okay. So I encourage you, if you, if you're, if you're going to spend money on craft supplies, which I'm sure most of you will, okay, you, you know what, spend, buy yourself one less $10 item, whatever it is, and join the classes. And really, I'm telling you, it will going to make a difference in the way you start creating. You will feel so much better. Ask Chrissy, ask Elaine, ask all the girls that are like, join every month, it really makes a huge difference. And, um, and yeah, so Anyways, that was my feeling. And I don't really mean like, you know, $10 is not going to make a difference in my life in terms of like uh, what I need, but it's going to make a difference in maybe somebody else's, you know. Oh, yes, I really like that. And one last thing, <laughs> because I never can ever like finish up. So in the other one, I actually um, added some stamping, some script stamping, and I used black for it. However, you will not be able to see the black on this page at all. And this is one of my favorite stamps. It's just a simple script stamp. I don't even know what is it from. Any script stamp will work. But in this case, I actually have a little bit of gold um, pigment ink, ink. Sorry, gold pigment ink. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. And I am going to show you. I'm going to add a little bit of it onto it is to really make this look good. Um... I don't know if you can see it. Can you see the gold? It's hard. I'm going to lift it up. I'm going to lift the journal up. And the way I hold my stamp, this is another trick. Um, but 
it's it, to hold your stamp this way, you're not gonna get a perfect image, which is what I want. I want that distressed look. Let me show you how it, let me show this to you in close up. So you can, can you see that? Oh yeah, you can see it. You see the, the stents that, the, the, um, I don't know, I just looks really, really cool. Just wanna fix one thing here. When I bent the page, the A kind of became weird. So I'm going to fix it. Okay, there we go. You see, you can always use fix that with a black marker. You can fix things as well. So I know you guys probably have so many materials out in your house that you're just, you're just sitting there collecting dust. Well, what I do in my classes is actually teach you how to use those materials. So you don't have to go buy more, but just actually use what you have. So I am just so thankful that you guys came today and chatted with me and just, I hope you learned a lot. I really love this page. I don't know, it's just me, but I just love the way it turned out. And one thing I wanted to say is actually going back to the question about why I covered most of it. You see how most of it is green here? You wouldn't be able to, to mix the green and the purples together. Um, Unless, oh, thank you so much, Noni. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, it, you wouldn't be able to mix the two colors together because those are from two different parts, like cool colors and warm colors kind of become brownish. But because I had it as a monoprint, I could have a green monoprint underneath and then have to the, the purple on top. And you can really combine those colors. So that's something that is just... Um, just something that I mean again that I teach and like I give in all the tips that I do so thank you so much for coming today look at me I'm still wanting like oh I can make more splatters I want more splatters yeah I always want more splatters so thank you so much for joining me today from just being here I will of course have more things for you in the upcoming uh, weeks and feel free to message me if you have any questions or if you know something about my stencils and please please post any if you get my stencils or my stamps please post your work either if you tag me on instagram put it on facebook in my facebook group if you haven't joined that facebook group it's amazing very encouraging and i want to see what you create with you, my stuff because like, I want to see, I want to get ideas because, you know, I feel like I always do the same stuff over and over. So yeah. And um, I'm linking, I will be linking the video for how I made the monoprints at the end of this video, if you want to watch that as well. Thank you so much and have an amazing day, everyone. Love you. And you know, if you don't want to do it, if you're scared, do it anyways. Bye.